welcome to December. Oh god. Welcome to my November wrap up. Um, November was quite a like, I don't really know month for reading for me. I like read quite a lot at the beginning of the month and then I kind of like slumped for a lot. And so I ended up reading four books, which I'm not mad about. Like that's one a week, like, I'm totally okay with that. So before we jump headfirst straight into the wrap up, I'm gonna do my stats for you. So as I said, in November, I read four books and they were all physical books. I didn't finish any audiobooks. I did get really far through an audiobook, but I've actually canceled my script um, subscription temporarily temporarily to save some money um, and I did not manage to finish it in time before it cancelled and I have an hour left of that book so maybe I'll read it in January. <laughs> um, that was Things We Lost in the Fire by Mariana Enriquez which I was really enjoying. Maybe I should just sign up for script again. It's only a tenner. Oh, whatever. Anyway, out of the four books I did read, one was a library book, two were gifted to me, and then one was a backlist book. Three were by female authors and one was by a male author. One of the books I read featured a main character with a disability and its own voices as well. One of the books I read was a translation. One book was by an author of colour, which is definitely not good enough, and that is going to be a real focus for me in 2021. Hello, Editing Jazz here. I actually got that wrong. Two authors I read this month were authors of colour. Um, however, I still don't think that's good enough and would kind of like to continue making that more. Okay, back with the video. One of the books was LGBTQ+, which is also not good enough. Um, that's also a focus for me in 2021 as well. And finally, one of the books was set outside the UK and the US, which is always a goal of mine. That is the, that's my stats. Hopefully it will do a bit better in December. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into the wrap up. <laughs> Bye. Hello, welcome to the first section of my wrap up on the 5th of November, I believe. Ooh, bonfire night. Spooky. I finished A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Um, it's a few days later now. I have not stopped thinking about this book. I had only heard five stars going into this book. Everyone loves it. And so there were very high expectations going in um, and they were exceeded, like, like wildly exceeded. For those who don't know, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder follows Pippa and she is doing her EPQ, which is an extended project qualification you can do in the UK, like at the same time as your A-levels for like an extra project. And she decides to do her EPQ on the murder of a girl called Andy Bell. She was murdered by her boyfriend, Sal Singh. Or was she? Yeah, that is what this book is basically. Everyone knows that he did it, but Pippa's just not convinced. And so she decides to do her EPQ, looking into the murder, looking into the case and uncovering things. And oh my actual God, I now know why people are like, this is the iconic YA thriller. It was incredible. The pacing was amazing. I could not put it down. I was like eager to get back to it. Every twist and turn I like didn't see coming. Um, but also Pippa as the main character is excellent. I loved following her. It didn't have that vibe of a thriller where the main character is just being so annoying and like, oh, you're really missing the obvious or like, you know, they immediately jump to a conclusion and it's just like stupid. Like that didn't happen in this book. Everything I thought when evidence was presented to me she thought too, which was just so satisfying to have like a character that actually thinks, actually thinks and isn't just like, oh, it has to be this. And then like runs off in a tangent. Five stars, just high five stars. Oh my God. I don't know. This is like, this book has like rejuvenated me. Um, yeah, I'm psyched. I'm, I literally, I don't, I'm like babbling about it. <sighs> it was just really good. It's just really, really good. As well as that, there was also like, I really enjoyed that Pippa came from an interracial family and so, it also explored that at the same time as mainly just being a thriller um, YA mystery. You will not regret it. Go read this book. Uh, that's all I have to say because I'm babbling. Um, on to the next one. Read this book. <sighs> okay, so here's the situation. I finished this book, A Girl's Guide to Being Awesome by Suzanne Verdi. 
maybe like 10 days ago, 12 days ago, and I forgot to do my little, my little thoughts of it. Uh, so we're gonna do it now. Um, I finished this book maybe on like the 10th of November. I also didn't lock it. I don't understand what I was up to 10 days ago. <sighs> Actually, it was my birthday. That's what happened. It was the day after my birthday that I finished it. Anyway, whatever, no one cares. Um, that's why I forgot. Anyway, let's just get on with it. Um, this book was kindly gifted to me by Summersdale Publisher. Um, so thank you very much. And I included it in my 16 books for 16 year olds video, which you can view in a card. Similar to what I said in that video, I think because this book covers so many things, it covers mental health, body image, self-esteem, um, gender identity, sexuality, uh, social media. It covers like a lot. It covers everything you'd kind of expect it to cover when targeting itself at like teenagers. Um, I think it kind of depends what you want to take away from it that will like help you the most. Does that make sense? So like, I think some of the things in it I would have kind of like rolled my eyes at, but then some of the things I think would have really helped me at that time. So I think it really depends what you're um, struggling with in terms of how it will help you. Oh my God, my arm is absolutely killing me. <laughs> yeah, overall I'd feel this is like maybe like a 3.5-ish, four star-ish, I don't really know. Um, I'm not really the target audience for this book at all, um, but I do think it will be really beneficial for teenagers. Um, it's also a workbook, um, and so you can kind of like work through it, and there's like prompts to fill in, and there's really nice like empowering illustrations and quotes and stuff. So I think it's really, it's a really well done um, book. So yeah, overall, you know, if you have a teenager in your life that you think might benefit from this book, I would recommend it. Okay, and now we're back to our regularly scheduled viewing. Hello, it is Friday the 13th. Spooky. Um, I figured I would come on here and just tell you about the book that I finished reading earlier. Don't mind. I don't even know if you can see my collection of little monkeys here. Just keeping guard of the bed. I'm 26, I'm a 26 year old woman, leave it alone. Um, I was really obsessed with monkeys as a kid. This, this is why I have all of these. Anyway, I'm really sorry, this is gonna be real shaky. I wasn't gonna do this now and then I was like, let's just do it now. So here we are. I just finished earlier Run by Cody Keplinger. This book was a kind recommendation and gift actually from Lois from Lochan Reads. Um, so a big shout out to Lois. She has a wonderful booktube channel. I will leave it linked below. I highly recommend you go and check her out. We did a book swap over on her Instagram. Um, I sent her autobiography and by Christina Lauren and she sent me Run and so basically did a nice live show discussing all that and that was earlier um you can catch up and watch it on her igtv uh it was a really great discussion yeah so my thoughts on run this is the kind of book that i think it would have put me off because of the associations let me explain i have never read a book by cody keplinger but in the corner there it says from the author of the duff now a major motion picture i watched the duff whenever it came out however long ago that was and I hated it I hated it I hated it a lot I think just by that it would have put me off I just would have been like no I don't even no <laughs> I'm not gonna read it and it's really showing me to not do that because I absolutely loved this book I gave it four stars um there's no real reason why it's not five stars it just didn't feel like a five star read sometimes it just doesn't hit that spot this book is dual narrated and it follows Agnes and Bo and the concept slash the beginning of this book is that they have run away from home together and we follow two timelines the timeline of them running away and that is narrated by Bo and then we also follow before it happened and kind of like leading up to it and that is narrated by Agnes I really loved this book. I really loved the discussion it had about friendship. It really highlights how important platonic friendships are and how valuable they are. I loved that. Love a book that focuses on friendship. I also really enjoyed the exploration of Agnes's disability. Agnes is blind and I realised I've never read a book with a blind main character which is really bad and I'm definitely going to be reading more. I really enjoyed hearing from her perspective and especially a major focus of this book is that 
her parents are really overprotective, really overbearing. Throughout the novel, she goes through a lot of like character development and stands up to them. It's horrible that she has to do that and really highlights the kind of things that people with disabilities have to deal with and the way that able-bodied people will like assume that they can't do certain things. Cody Keplinger also has the same disability, uh, so it is an own voices book, which you can tell, I think, and I really enjoyed that aspect. Overall, I just absolutely loved it. There's so many more things I could talk about, but you know, if you want to hear those, go and watch the live show that we did. But yeah, really good book, and um, I would really recommend it. Also, there is Casual by Rep. I knew you were wondering. Also, it discusses religion as well, um, just intertwined in there as well, which is really interesting. So yeah, overall, excellent, excellent read. On to the next one. Hello, it is my lunch break, so I've got to be quick because I have just finished Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. Oh boy. So this is translated from the Japanese into the English by Jeffrey Truslau. Yes, I have just literally finished this like three minutes ago and oh, I loved it. So the concept of this book is that there's a cafe in like a small back alley in Tokyo. This cafe is kind of a little famous for being able to send people back in time, basically. And so there's this one seat in this cafe where you can travel back in time. And there are all of these rules involved, like you have, you can't move from the seat. There's only a very specific time window where you can do it. And one of the very important rules is that you must return to the present before the coffee gets cold. Such a good concept and I loved it. It's split into four sections. So there's like four stories that we follow, but they very much intersect. And what I didn't expect going into this was that we'd get such a focus on like the people that work in the cafe. And I loved that so much. And they are very much involved in the stories themselves. Um, I have seen online, some people have said it's quite repetitive, like the same format for each story kind of like, appears and I can definitely understand that. I actually loved that. It had the same format but it was like a different vibe each time and the more we got into it different things would appear and I actually I really loved it but I can definitely see that like wouldn't be their cup of tea, wouldn't be their cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's not funny. I really liked it. It gave me very heartwarming like cozy vibes like the way that like the coffee is described and the magical elements of going back in time and it also explores relationships so well like family relationships oh so yeah highly recommend this one and i'm really excited to pick up the second one as well which came out a few months ago on to the next one yeah i didn't read anything else for the rest of the month <laughs> i made a good start on a few books so you'll see those in my december wrap up but um that was it i think it was like a pretty good month i read like a few new faves so it was a pretty good month to be honest even though i didn't read like loads and loads um i'll have a bit of downtime in december for christmas so i'm hoping to just like just get some cozy reads in also like get those books i want to actually finish before the end of the year books in sort of vibe uh, and yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Look out for some exciting December videos to come. And I'll see you in a new video. Bye.